first story we're going to do, we have got to talk about this WWE wrestler who died saving his son. Take a look and a listen at this story. The L.A. County coroner has identified the body on L.A. Venice Beach as ex-WWE superstar Shad Gasper. The body was first seen on the beach by a citizen who called the cops around 1.30 a.m. on Wednesday, and according to law enforcement sources, we're told uh, that officers responded and recovered the body near Venice Pier. Shad Gaspard and his son were out swimming, and uh, he was swept out to sea while swimming at the California beach. Uh, he was last seen by a lifeguard after a wave had crashed over Mr. Gaspard and he was swept out to sea. Uh, he had directed them to save his 10-year-old son, uh, and after that, and after they did actually save his son, uh, he, was, he wasn't seen again after they came back for him. So uh, really heroically, he had a part to save his son, and he sacrificed his own self for his son, what a father, what any good father would do. Man, Woo. wow, man. You want to talk about real life Aquaman type stuff? Man, let me, let me just tell y'all something. For as much as they try to say, where are all the good dads at? Where are all the good men at? This man... Yeah sacrifice his own life so that his young legacy can have some say in the world. I don't know. I don't know if any of us who are still living and have never been through this know what it likes to know you're getting ready to die. Like that moment when your heart is pounding, the adrenaline is rushing and you have no choice. This man to save his son sacrificed himself and went back and died I watched him on WWE. I was never a fan of Crime Time, but I knew that he was doing big things outside of WWE, so I was a fan of him. And all I can say is rest in peace. Um, little man, know that you have a community from now on the rest of your life that's going to support you because of this valiant, heroic effort. Your dad is a hero. He so much loved you that he gave up his own life for you. And Larry, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, man, that's that's tough. That that is really tough. I mean, at ten years old to actually be out there and watch your father die, and then know that he sacrificed his life to save yours. I mean, on one on one end, you know that that that's what a father is supposed to do, or a parent in general is supposed to do. But there's going to be a lot of survivor's guilt that kid's going to have to contend with for the rest of his life. There's going to be a lot of guilt to contend with. And that's, wow, that's that's really, really tough. So, but Larry, I you know, him. I'm sure he thought about that, too. And it, it made me think about the situation with Kobe and his daughter, where the wife was saying, I don't know if you recall Kobe's wife saying that a part of her was okay with the daughter dying with Kobe because she didn't know how the daughter was going to move on without her dad and one of her best friends in her life. And, and when you think about right. it like that, it's kind of like, it's a catch 22. I mean, as a dad, you are gonna sacrifice yourself most of the time to save your kid. But if, you yeah. know, with him being, a, he was a Kobe Bryant fan. He was also a bodyguard for Mike Tyson. I'm sure it went through his mind, if I die, man, my kid is going to be torn up. He's probably going to have to have therapy. But at the end of the day, Larry, what choice do you have? You sacrifice yourself for your kid and you hope that yeah. they can, through therapy and everyone else that loves them, you know, help them overcome this just tragic, tragic situation. Yeah, it's that's that's tough, man. I mean, but it is what it is. Like you said, I mean, it's, it's a done deal now, but... That's just what, you know, it's one of those things that anytime you're doing something that's dangerous, you know, you have to, I mean, people have to remember that, that it, things can go sideways really quick and parents mm -hmm. have to understand that even though you want to take your kids out and let them experience the world, you still have to try and keep them as far away from danger as you can. And some things are in, you know, some things are unavoidable, you know, but there, I mean, the ocean is a dangerous place. I grew up in California and, you know, Venice, Santa Monica, that whole area. Those, those were my regular stomping grounds. And as far as swimming, 
those places are par- fairly mild. People swim out there a lot because the currents aren't super aren't super strong. But it's the ocean. It can pick up at any moment. You could be swimming in a very mild current. The next thing you know, one just comes from underneath and just pulls you down. And, you know, I, I tell people, if you're not a strong swimmer, don't go into the ocean, even if you're with someone who is. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, one person can live, but someone's going to die saving the other person. And, you know, I mean, I... I for for years I was a I was a licensed lifeguard and you know I was and you know I I learned how to I I did all my lifeguard training in the ocean and so I I know how difficult it is to actually save someone you know mm-hmm. and it's challenging you don't want I mean I've luckily I've never actually had to go out into the ocean to save someone I did went through the train I actually never had to save anyone's life thank goodness but I know how difficult it is just with the training, having to do the whole cross chest carry. People are freaking out. And, you know, they tell you at times someone's freaking out, knock them out. If you can knock them out, choke them out, do whatever you have to do. If they, if you have to make them unconscious so that they're not flying about they're like, it's easier to, to, to carry a limp body than it is someone who's basically freaking out and trying to take you down with them. Cause that's what happens. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, People need people need to be careful with themselves in their lives. I think sometimes people think they're bigger than life and they're not thinking about everything or they think that because their skills are, are of a certain level that they can handle being out there with someone else. And just be careful, people. Be careful with your life. Be careful with the lives of those around you. So we have no, a couple of people. The ocean is just a dangerous place. So you just have to be careful. We've got a couple of people who've had some life experience and some people that dealt with that buzz has had to deal with it. And my man, David Cesar has had to deal with it. Um, my hearts go out to both of you guys and having to deal with that. And my heart goes out to this kid. I'm very sensitive to issues with children right now because in a month, y'all are gonna be seeing a little baby on my arm every now and then sprinkle in here to say, hey. So I'm, sens- I'm highly sensitive to those things and just trying to learn as best I can from what everyone else is doing. And like I said, I just wish his family well. I hope WWE does something special for the family. And um, we're going to wish them well, man. Going to wish them well. And just a little little tip for people. If you're ever out in the ocean and you get caught in a, and you get caught in a, in a riptide in a current, don't, don't swim against it. People have the, people have this natural inclination to sort of swim against it and try and get to shore right away. And that is what you don't want to do because what happens is, is that you're swimming against something that you can't swim against really. And you become physically exhausted. And the next thing you know, you you know, you go under, if you feel this thing pulling you swim with it and do try and get to the shore, but swim with it. So if it's pulling you left, go left. You may end up a mile. You might end up 10 miles down but eventually you should be able to get out if you can swim forward and go towards it then you can you know but what you don't want to do is swim against it to the point that you get physically exhausted and then you can no longer swim so mm. my and, tip. Also, and also yeah. if you haven't teach your child to swim early on i right. never got the swimming lesson to this day when i can't hold my breath anymore i'm not swimming I went to right. summer camp with these punk ass supposed to be camp counselors that the only thing they was worried about was screwing with each other. And me thinking that you can just naturally swim, my fat ass goes and jump off the diving board into the 12 foot pool. And I was a fat kid back then, ladies and gentlemen. And I just remember being under the water, not going up, kicking around, and I could see the Mountain Dew sign on the side of the pool. And you know what those mm. camp counselors did while they was flirting with each other? They came and fished my fat ass out and stuck me in the baby pool, eight years old, in the pool with five-year-olds. You would think someone would take the opportunity to say, let us teach you how to swim. Oh, no, right. no. They went They went back to feeling breasts and feeling asses. And for, <laughs> I've never learned how to swim, and I'm trying to learn how to do it now. Yeah, I'm a little edgy, y'all. I'm a little edgy today because these yeah. stories bother me. Because good parents, man, it bothers me. But